How can we help our children develop obedience? Isn't that a question that so many parents want answered? I am Jenny Amar. I'm the master trainer at Sunshine Teachers Training, and I entered the world of Montessori over 20 years ago. I have lived Montessori through training, through teaching, and through parenting my triplet boys who are now 18 years old. Montessori is my passion, and I will share it with pretty much everyone I meet. More often than not, when I do say something about Montessori, the first thing someone will say to me is, Oh, Montessori, that's the one where children can do whatever they want, whenever they want. Now, when somebody says that to you, the first image that conjures up in your mind is a room full of children just running all over the place, isn't it? It sounds like a chaotic mess. And that's what makes me always feel that Montessori is very misunderstood. Many feel that the famous Montessori term, which is follow the child, means that we just allow children to do anything they want without any form of discipline or obedience. So how do we, as Montessori guides, foster obedience through love in our children? I will give you my insights and also give you four essential tips on how to do this. If you like what I share, please hit the like button below and this will encourage me to come back and share more of my insights with you. So to start, let's first discuss what is obedience. Obedience in Montessori is very different from the way most of us have grown up and what we've experienced. We hear this word and the first thing that comes into your mind is control and commanding, isn't it? If we as parents want to control everything that our children are doing and make them do what we want them to do, then we're not allowing them to follow their own will. In order for a child to obey, they need to develop a will first, and they can only develop this by exercising it. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by developing will. Will is the ability of the child to make a choice, to be able to express a desire, or to agree to do something willingly. Think about it this way, okay? Little children have a lot of impulses. They will jump on sofas, they want to throw things, but when they learn to control those impulses, that is what we call a development of will. They have something they want to do, but they're able to control themselves and manage that. When a child takes a piece of work, for example, they sit with it, they work with it with deep concentration, and they put it back, that is an act of will. Like I mentioned, if we as parents want to control and command our children to do exactly as we want them to, it means we're not allowing them to follow their will. When we force children to obey us, they either give up on their own will and they submit to us, or they fight against us, and neither of these is a positive outcome for the parent or the child. Think about it for a moment. Do you really want a child who blindly obeys you with absolutely no opinion of their own? Or do you want a child who rebels against you anytime you try to maintain some kind of a discipline? Neither of these are workable, isn't it? Wouldn't it be better to do it the Montessori way and give your child the chance to naturally develop obedience? By giving them the freedom to develop their will and self-discipline, they will learn to obey out of choice because they want to, and that's a much better and long-lasting outcome. So then the question becomes, how do we develop obedience naturally? When we give children the freedom to develop naturally, they will move from obeying you because they have to, and now they will obey eagerly, follow the rules happily because they want to. No power struggles. Now, isn't that a dream come true? No fighting, no tears, no battles, absolute harmony. And who doesn't want that? Once we understand what the child needs, we also want to know how do we make this happen? How do we give the child the opportunity to practice? How will they develop this will? Don't worry, I have the answers for you. Here are four tips on how you can do this. Tip number one, allow your child to have the chance to make choices and practice making decisions. Start very simple, just give them two choices. Would you like to wear the blue t-shirt today or the red t-shirt today? What would you like to drink with your dinner? Would you like it to be milk or would you like it to be water? Just think for a minute, when you were growing up and you were two, three or four years old, 
Did anyone give you even the simplest of choices? It's really important for the children to have the opportunity to make a choice. Tip number two, when your child has decided, you need to respect it and follow through. He chooses to wear a Batman t-shirt that he loves, but you don't find it very appropriate for the event you're going through. If you try to override his decision now, he's either going to fight against you or he's going to completely weaken his will. And neither of those is something we want. So respect his decision. It may be difficult, but it gets easier over time. Tip number three, don't try and change your child's mind with your preferred choices and decisions. Your child says he prefers to have milk with dinner as opposed to water. You don't like that decision too much. You want to try and convince them it's okay. I think it would be better to, be, to have water. You might have a stomach ache. Once your child has made the decision, stick with it and don't try and change his mind. And tip number four, put a consequence in place right from the beginning. Instead of having punishments, you can't do this now that you've chosen to do, I'm not going to allow you to do something. Call it a consequence instead. Instead of entering into this battle of wills, explain in the very beginning what the consequence is. For example, when you are playing with your toys and you're done, you need to put them back in their place and then you will be able to go outside and play. If you do not tidy, I won't be able to allow you to go outside and play. So you've given them a choice they're playing, and if they're not able to follow through, there will be a consequence for that. It's not so difficult, right? It's a win-win situation for parent and child. Now, one very important ingredient that I have saved to mention at the very end is love. Remember, it's easy for a child to be obedient where there is love. Love doesn't mean that you're spoiling or indulging your child and giving in to everything that he wants, but it means that you're patient with your child. You listen to them and you're constantly telling them that you love them. Our children are truly capable of amazing things if we give them the chance and the support. One thing I always say is be patient with yourself just as you're patient with your child. Slowly and gradually, we always get there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It warms my heart to know that I can spread Montessori to more and more people. If you haven't already, Please subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified whenever we post new videos. I would be so happy to answer your questions. Feel free to leave them in the comments box and I will come back and answer them for you. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.